the 2014 Nobel Prize for Chemistry is a bit unusual this year. If you're a regular viewer of our videos, you're probably used to the fact that the Chemistry Nobel Prize can sometimes be a bit more biological than chemical. But this Nobel Prize is really using almost physics to study biology, but with a chemical twist to it. The idea of the prize is that it's gone to three scientists who have devised a way of looking inside biological cells with microscopy very much better, with much greater detail than has been possible before. And not only looking inside cells, but looking inside living cells. So you can actually see them working. Although it's a bit of physics, it's not too complicated. So let me explain the problem. The problem is that light is a wave. If you're trying to look at very small objects, there is a limit, if you just have a microscope with lenses, to the size of the object you can see. Because as the object gets smaller, comparable or smaller than the wavelength of light, it just becomes fuzzier and fuzzier, and eventually you can't see it at all. And the usual way to approach this is that you use, instead of light, you use electron beams where the wavelength is very, very short. So the object is still bigger than the wavelength of the electrons. The trouble is that the electrons, when they have a short wavelength, have enormously high energy. And so if you look at a biological cell, even if it wasn't dead beforehand, as soon as you start shining electrons on it, it dies. So you have no hope of looking at living things and you can't start shining electron beams into the brains of living organisms, let alone humans. They just die straight away. These prizes, which have been awarded to one scientist in Germany, Stefan Hell, two scientists in America, Eric Betzig and William Murner. And Betzig and Murner used one approach based on fluorescent proteins. You will remember that a Nobel Prize, I think it was in 2008, was awarded for green fluorescent proteins. And this is taking it, if you like, one step further. And the other um, technique was developed by um, Stefan Hell and involves lasers. The idea is that you have a cell with something inside it that you would like to image. And the thing you want to image is smaller than the wavelength of light. So if you can see any detail inside the cell, it will just be one blur on top of another. The idea, and not all the scales of this demonstration are right, because I wasn't expecting this Nobel Prize and I've just got some objects lying around my office. But you take one laser, which produces a spot that is determined by the wavelength of light. If in the cell there is something that fluoresces, that is when you shine on light, it gives out a different wavelength of light. Say you shine on green and it gives out red light. Then the blob of red light that comes out will be the same size as the spot of green light that you shine on it. But it will be much more intense in the centre of the spot than at the edges. What Stefan Hell discovered, at least I believe this is what he discovered, is that if you use two lasers at once, that's a red one and a green one, and got the spots to coincide, which I can't easily do, that the red spot would suppress most of the um, fluorescence caused by the green one so that the fluorescence became much sharper, so small that it could then be used to scan across the cell and see the image at much better resolution. I think what happens is that the second laser, and I don't know what the wavelengths are, I just happened here to use green and red, is that the second laser stops fluorescence from the part of the first beam where the light is not so intense. But where in the middle the first beam is really intense, then the second laser can't stop it. The other two, they were working not together, but one of their work, Myrna's work, 
stimulated breadstick and then back again so that they were working like a arguing couple almost so that one had an idea and then the other. But theirs involved the fluorescence of just individual molecules. And apparently the key breakthrough came with the fact that with the green fluorescent protein, this is a protein which when you shine it with light it fluoresces, it only fluoresces a certain number of times. So if you hit it with light the first time, it then starts fluorescing and gives out light. And you can repeat this perhaps 10 times and then it stops. Then you have to shine a different coloured light and you can switch it on again. And then by quite a complicated process, which I don't entirely understand, is by using different coloured fluorescing proteins, yellow, red, green, and hitting it with a laser, making it fluoresce, then letting it go quiet because it's switched off and then switching it on again, you can build up a picture of the inside of a cell of very great resolution. I think even without understanding all the details of how they did it, the fact that now one can look inside living cells and see things going on that nobody's ever been able to see before since the invention of the microscope is obviously a wonderful discovery and something which nobody, I think, would argue isn't worthy of a Nobel Prize. It may be that this particular year, with the blue LED going to physics, and this microscopy going to chemistry, that if I'd been choosing, I might have put them the other way round because there's a lot of chemistry in the LED and a lot of physics in the microscopy. But who are we to argue with the Swedish Academy? They understand Nobel Prizes better than anybody else.